Mubamba has to start on Thursday. No ifs, no ands, no buts, no none of that. Mubamba has to start on Thursday. I'm saying this more to Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave start him, okay? No, no, nothing else. I don't want to see nothing else, okay? I don't want to see Danny Ings. I don't want to see anything else. I don't even want to see Jared Bowen up front, okay? I, I don't even want to see Pakatar up front. I want Dim... Mubamba has to start, Okay, and this is coming from me. Okay, people who have watched watch songs will know that I wouldn't say defended Danny Ings, although defended maybe the inclusion of Danny Ings slightly more than others. I would say I understand, and I'll, I'll address this in a second. But I understand why he has started in games. Whenever I've seen him on on the team sheet starting or coming off the bench, I get it. I understand why. Even if I personally wouldn't do it, David Moyes does a lot of things I wouldn't do, frankly. And so I'm sort of like. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. If you watch the watch along, you watched the build up show yesterday when I came on uh, with Gonzo just half an hour before kickoff and we were talking about it. I was like, I get it, man. I'm not here to be, I'm not frustrated. I'm not angry. There was a lot of anger in the live chat. And I understand again, because of the live chat, how much of a, how much of a, a singular opinion or position that is. Because look, I'll be real with you. I sit there and I do the watch along and when these things happen, I have a live feed of hundreds of people shouting about it like i see the reaction i understand west town fans opinion on it but frankly even me who says that mubama has to start on thursday we can't get around it anymore and i think this is the one big shining light from yesterday's game there were a couple of positives i can't lie i think mohammed kudos had a sort of typical Kudus performance where I felt like there was a long time where I wasn't enjoying it that much. You could see he had something in him and I was willing him to do something with it. But a lot of the time he's running into dead ends and getting dispossessed a bit easily. And I'm finding it really frustrating to watch because you, you can see the ability and the talent, but he has that magical je ne sais quoi or whatever that means in French. I don't even know what it means, but I've said it out loud now. I think I'm right when I say that. That magical something where he can do nothing for 85 minutes and then bang assist, bang assist, just beautiful moments payet esque in that sense of that ability to just pull a rabbit out of the hat we've seen it with goals previously from him and don't get me wrong i don't think it was 85 minutes of nothing from him yesterday but you understand what i'm saying he has that in and i think that was a positive from yesterday suchek scoring again last minute winner as much as it was at is a positive and listen i'll put my hands up i'll say it you know if Thomas Suchek wants to score a last minute winner from now to the end of the season, be it on a cup run in Europe, be it on a cup run for the League Cup or whatever, listen, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. If anyone wants to see entertaining football, it's me. I have to sit and do a watch along for, every, for so many hours. I mean, it, I dread to think if you added up all the hours over the last, what, four seasons or whatever, we've been doing a watch along now, I think. We could be doing a watch along for four seasons or something now. I dread to think if you counted up that time, how long I've been sat there going... We don't look very good. We've just got nothing. We're just not going to score. We've just got nothing. I dread to imagine how long that is. So if anyone's got incentive to watch us play attacking football and actually go for it, it's this guy, right? It's this guy. But listen, if he wants to do it, listen, if it fires us to a trophy, it fires us to a trophy. I'm not going to complain too much. But the big shining light that I think is actually important, not just for yesterday, not just until the end of 23, but also January and also to the end of the season, Mubama proving the point. Mubama proving that he should be the person getting in ahead of Danny Ings. Mubama scoring. And listen, own goal. Yeah, probably. I don't, I don't think Mubama's anywhere close to touching it. Looking at the replay on match of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm getting right up close to the, the to screen. I'm slowing it down on iPlayer to 0.25 speed to really look at it. Yeah, look, it's an own goal. But he gets into the position and he does something that I find incredibly frustrating when strikers don't do. Just follow the ball in. Just follow the ball in. It's such a simple thing. And there are certain strikers who are doing it from stylistic choices. For example, Skamaka usually would drop deep and find space deep. But just if you're not that guy, which Mubamba isn't, just follow the ball in. Get into the positions where you're going to be able to do something a bit panicky and force people into own goals like this because his movement is what gets the goal. Listen, is it an own goal? Is it going to go down as a Mubamba goal? No, he hasn't got his first Premier League goal in that sense. But it will go down as something, if you watch it, as something he forced the issue on because of his movement, which is incredibly important. And that is important for not just Thursday, where again, Mubama has to start, 
But also for the rest of 2023, we've got our two other striking options in Bowen and Antonio injured at the moment. Bowen potentially will be back for the next game. Antonio may be a little bit longer, but they're both injured and Antonio injury is a scary thing. So take your time with those and start Mubama. Danny Ings obviously not working out. So start Mubama. You could play Pakatar up front or whatever, I guess, or Kudus up front. Pakatar I prefer over Kudus. Kudus I don't think would work for West Ham. Pakatar I think works, but only in specific instances. And I don't think we have the players around him right now to make that happen. But again, start Mubama. Give him the game time to grow. Because one of the things I find frustrating about the West Ham in general opinion on Mubama and the Mubama situation is whenever a, another Premier League team team starts a young player or a player around Mubama's age, I see a lot of people reply to it going, he's, he's done it. Why can't David Moyes? And actually, frankly, I think that's quite... I think it's it's too shallow a way of looking at it. David Moyes doesn't necessarily have a problem with starting young players once. It's giving them a consistent run of games. And I think that's something that is rare in, in football. I think David Moyes makes a fair point when he was when he was talking about Mubama's age and saying there aren't many players in the Premier League playing uh, that many minutes at Mubama's age. And he's not wrong to say that, but equally there aren't many people who need to start Mubama. <laughs> start Mubama. There aren't many people who need to start as much as Mubama needs to start for us for the way David Moyes plays, right? So I think he is correct. And I do find it frustrating when fans go, Newcastle have started that guy. Why can't David Moyes start it? Well, he has started. He actually has a good track record of starting youth players, David Moyes. The big, his problem is actually giving them chances to play, to develop, to get involved with the team because they'll come on for a couple of minutes at the end of the game or they'll play once and then never come back again. You know what I mean? He called Reese Oxford back on loan. Do you remember that when he was here first time to go, let's have a look at Reese Oxford. Then when Reese Oxford's finally getting game time in Germany, he calls him back and then goes, nah, I'm not on it. And then sends him back again. It's infuriating. It's infuriating. And with Danny Ings, I understand why he has to play Danny Ings. I do. I get it. It's, again, it's not something that's popular, but I understand it for two reasons. One, <sighs> frankly, we want we want Danny Ings to be sold, and Danny Ings needs to be sold. And for in order for people to maybe try and buy Danny Ings, he sort of needs to be in their brains. You don't go into a shop and just have no idea what you're going in there for. They have to put the items in front of your face. Even Argos, who hide them somewhere, don't know where, I don't know how Argos works, but even Argos who do that, there's a, cat well, it used to be a catalog, now it's like a iPad thing that you press on, right? But do you remember the catalogs and the big blue things that you press in? I miss those. Bring those back and the pens and pencils. Um, even they have a system for that. You have to put people in front of people's faces to remember to do it. Secondly, he is a player who's on a six-figure salary at West Ham. He's one of the highest paid players at West Ham. And if you're one of the highest paid players at West Ham, it's quite difficult to go, no, nah, we're going to play an 18-year-old who's never got, who's got no real experience ahead of you. It's a difficult thing to it's a difficult thing to do. And again, as David Moyes as someone who is on a short-term contract, I don't necessarily blame him for going for the experienced head as opposed to the guy who could do nothing. The problem is, is once again, we've seen yesterday that when you put Mubama in the David Moyes system, he suits more than Danny Ings. There's so much evidence for Danny Ings not working. That, that argument becomes null and void. Even me who would make that argument and tries to see that side of the argument, there's just, you can't anymore, man. You can't, it's done, it's over. You can't try that anymore. It's impossible to happen. And we just have to hope that someone comes in and gets Danny Ings. In January and further in January, I think this is a big thing for Mubama. Do not buy another striker. If Danny Ings goes, if we can sell Danny Ings, or get or just just shift him on somehow then we can maybe look towards getting another striker buying a striker getting one in on loan i don't really care how depending on who it is but if that isn't to happen if danny ings is still here at the end of january do not get another striker don't don't and i know that's kind of insane because we have antonio whose fitness is a bit you know, wonky right now. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. There's rumours he was going to be out for nine months and then all of a sudden he's back in a couple of weeks. Antonio and injuries is always a concerning thing. But we can't go and buy another person who's probably going to be on wages, not probably as high as Danny Ings, but significantly higher than most people in, even in the Premier League, but probably at West Ham. 
and then expect Boo Bauer to get game time. It's just not going to happen, especially if David Moyes is somehow involved in that conversation. It's just not going to happen. So if that is the case, that Danny Ings is still here at the end of January, do not buy another player. Give the game time to Mubama. Start Mubama on Thursday. And look, if Bowen's back fit, which he might be, I I can envisage a situation which he plays up front instead, you know, and Mubama's on the bench again. And once Antonio's back fit, I can envisage a situation in which, you know, Bowen's back on the right, Antonio's back up front, and Mubama's back potentially not even on the bench, depending on how fitness things goes. Which makes it even more important that you start him on Thursday. Because this now's the time. He's proven it. Even if that doesn't count as his goal, he's proven that he suits the system so significantly more than Danny Ings. I felt like the first half was almost super turgid because we had to accommodate certain things because of Danny Ings and it just does not work. And if yesterday was not a golden example of that, then gee golly, boy whiz, I don't know what is. And that's the big, big shining light from yesterday is that I think it's probably impossible to reject impossible to reject and I know there are a lot of people out there who hate David Moyes right I know that I know there are a lot of people who think David Moyes should be gone I know there are a lot of people who take it further and hate David Moyes I know there are a lot of people who just have very strong opinions on David Moyes in a broad sense I get that I understand that right and again I fully expect things to start on Thursday I do. And part of us will say in the build up show and on every other channel and in every other way, we'll sit here and go, wow, it's because he's going to be resting with Bama for the weekend, didn't he? But I think it's impossible to deny at this point. It's impossible to deny. And I don't even think Bubama had that great a performance. But it was so significantly, it was so bluntly, explicitly obvious that he is better for David Moyes than Danny Ings that I think at this point, thankfully, potentially, and I'm looking forward to be proven wrong on this, he might listen. We'll see. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video. Let me know. Do you think Rubama should start on Thursday? Because I do. Can you tell? Uh, and uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers, everyone. See you later. Come on, you guys. Enjoy yourselves. Bye.